<laughs> All right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. <laughs> I'll call to order the regular meeting of the Common Council of the City of Platteville for Tuesday, November 14, 2017, and we'll start with roll call. Catherine Westaby? Here. Barbara Doss? Here. Don Francis is running late. Barbara Stackhausen? Here. Ken Killian? Here. Eileen Nichols? Here. And Tom Nall? Here. First item is consideration of the consent calendar. The following items may be approved in a single motion and vote due to their routine nature of previous discussion. Please indicate to the council president if you would prefer a separate discussion and action. This item is the council minutes from our October 17th meeting, a special meeting, and also our October 24th regular meeting. B is payment of bills. C is financial report for October. He has appointments to boards and commissions, and we have had a resignation on the museum board, so I am appointing Dave Allen to take the place term. Uh, licenses, one-year and two-year operator licenses to sell and serve alcohol, also for taxi drivers. Move to approve the consent. I'll second, but... Note that your microphone is going in and out. I don't know that I can do much about that. You need to sit closer. Okay. All right. <laughs> we have a motion to move on. Westaby? Yes. Does? Yes. Stackhausen? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Nall? Yes. And Francis? Next on the uh, agenda is the citizens' comments, observations, and petitions, and we do ask people to fill out this uh, green piece of paper. So we have two people who have asked to speak this evening. Actually, I'll start with the city manager first. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so I'm here tonight once again to do something special, and this is the fourth time since I've been here that I've gotten to do this, and that is to recognize an employee who's retiring after 30 years of service. So I'd like to invite Stephanie sager Borette to come up here. And we have a special proclamation for Stephanie in recognition of her service, and I'd like to take a moment and read that. Um, whereas Stephanie sager Barrett has faithfully served the city of Platteville since 1985, whereas Stephanie has developed many exhibits and programs for the public, including 30 Christmas-themed exhibits, and whereas Stephanie has been integrally involved with the his Platteville Historic Reenactment, which celebrated its 20th anniversary this year, Whereas Stephanie has served loyally as the Secretary of the Wisconsin Federation of Museum Boards, and whereas Stephanie has embodied the spirit of public service in faithfully, diligently, and honestly executing her duties, and whereas Stephanie's professional talents have contributed to making the Platteville community a better place to live, work, and play, now I, therefore, now therefore I, excuse me, Karen M. Kurtz, City Manager of the City of Platteville on behalf of the Common Council of City Employees, both past and present, do hereby wish to express our sincere appreciation to Stephanie for her dedication and service to the city of Platteville. And I, just, I just wanted to make an additional comment. I know this has been a little bit of mixed emotions for Stephanie, um, and, and to some extent, extent she adjusted her timeline to accommodate reductions that were made in the museum's budget and i think that is perhaps her last gift to us um, in terms of her service so thank you stephanie we have uh two individuals who have asked to speak. Uh, the first is Dave Ralph on pedestrian safety. He will give your name and your address, please. My name is David Ralph. My address is 75 North Oak Street, apartment 307, which is Jenner Towers, which is a big part of the reason I'm here. 
Uh, I wanted to, I know I've sent some emails to a couple of council members and I think Karen Kurt got it also, but I thought I would make you all aware of the fact that there really should be a, a pedestrian crosswalk between Jenner Towers and Jenner Park there on Mineral Street for a number of reasons besides the fact that I don't know how many people live in my own building and they're wonderful people. When they go to cross uh, Mineral Street over to the park, there's a lot of vehicles parked there and traffic coming up the hill, which would be westbound on Mineral Street, for some reason think they need to go extra fast because it's a hill. And so they come zipping up there and sometimes they're pretty big trucks, all types of traffic and of course, some of our pedestrians who are either in wheelchairs or with walkers or with canes cannot scoot across the street the way they did 30 years ago. And so I'm hoping that the city, uh, you know, through its budget, budget magic, can come up with a 15 mile per hour sign, you know, down the hill a little ways and then add a pedestrian crosswalk sign before they would get to the actual crosswalk. And ideally, there would be sloped curves on, curbs on both sides of the street to accommodate the walkers and the wheelchairs and make it easier for the, the folks with canes. Otherwise, they have to go farther west up a grade uh, there on Mineral Street and then cross over and come sort of back into the park. And I know that this past year since I've been there, uh, a lot of our residents voluntarily sweep up and clean up the shelter. And I know some of them are smokers, of course, because they have to be outside the building now. They can't even smoke in their apartments. But they also have picnics over there even for the non-smokers that are invited. And I know that part of the reason for putting those public garden plots there on along Mineral Street by the park was to encourage our Jenner Tower residents to go over there and have their own little garden plots. And I believe one of the um, university Greek clubs is willing to volunteer and help with those plots. Um, and since I came up with this uh, crosswalk idea, some of my neighbors wanted me to also ask for a windbreak there at the shelter, since it gets so cold with the wind coming through there. And I don't know if the city would fund something like that, but we would like permission possibly to have some kind of fundraiser or seek donations from maybe some local businesses or something. And I think there's even some of our residents that have family members that would be willing to donate or something to install a windbreak there somehow. I'm, I'm not an engineer or a carpenter, so I'm not sure what that would entail. But uh, thank you for your time, and I'll look forward to hearing more from the city. Uh, if they can come up with something for that, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would just acknowledge that we have that in our queue to look at. Um, and uh, actually, depending on what happens at our work session tonight, that will probably be left next on our list. All right. The other person uh, is interested in something we're going to have in our work session, but I encourage you to speak now. It should be in video so other people will also be able to hear your comments. So uh, Carly Anderson. <coughs> So I'm here tonight just to um, express my concerns. Um, I'm a resident on Pioneer Road. Um, so just to express my concerns around the Tuga parking um, as a resident on Pioneer Road and a mother of three children. So um, I'll keep it short and sweet. I am gonna stay for the work set or the work set. Um, some of my concerns um, along with some of my fellow neighbors um, include uh, increased traffic through our quieter neighborhood, obviously. Um, our speed of drivers um, crash. So we've also, I've also noticed in excessive amount of trash and garbage on the side um, up the hill to Pioneer. Um, 
And then um, as far as property value goes, um, as a, a newer homeowner in UW, um, so came here about a year and a half ago, um, negatively impacts, I think, a buyer's perspective of if I knew that. All my concerns, I'll stay for the work session afterwards. Um, Other development agreement, so. I really, if I do this, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I thought I was sitting close, but here we go, folks. All right, next, reports. Board Commission Committee reports that are in our packet. Water and Sewer Commission, Noel Killian or Stockhausen. No addition. Land Commission, Nichols and Noel, I don't have any additions. No. Museum Board, Westerby. I want to add that the Friends of the Mind hold this Thursday. Them with And everybody's going to have to speak into their microphones. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Move to you. Thanks. Uh, next is Redevelopment Authority Board, Dawes. Nothing to add. Housing Authority Board, Killian. Additions. Other reports in our packet. Uh, city Attorney Itemized Report for October. The Water and Sewer Financial Report for October. Airport Financial Report for October. And Department Progress Reports. Comments on any of those? Right, hearing none, we'll go on to our first action item, which is the 2017 Auditing Services Proposal. So we had um, uh, presented this at the last Common Council meeting. Um, we, have, uh, we had reached out to Johnson Block, our auditors of many, many years, um, and asked to uh, go one more year on um, having them as our auditor. Uh, with the uh, uh, intention to go out for uh, proposals next year for the um, for the audit of the 2018 uh, financial statements. So uh, what we're asking is for the council to approve um, their proposal to perform audit services for the 2017 financial year. You're going to have to speak into your microphone. Are you seeking a lower price? Are you seeking better service than these people provide? Do you have any comments? You can uh, I don't. I understand it's the practice of the city to uh, go out for proposals every three years for audit services. Well, we've, we've, had, we've used them for many years. I'm asking whether satisfied with the service um well uh, I actually haven't been through an audit with Johnson block so I, it's hard for me to speak to uh, but I believe based on the history of the number of years that the city has um, stayed with Johnson block that the city has been very satisfied with those services question so the, the question is um, 
Uh, the reason for going out for proposal next year for city uh, for the audit for the city financials and and um, my understanding is that the city does go out for <coughs> um, proposals every three years for audits. And, and yes. perhaps I can. Are you starting a new practice to go no, out? No, they go out. Er we go out every three years, but this year with the changes. I didn't get the RFP out soon enough, so we went for an extension because we were getting so close to budget time that we just wanted to extend Johnson Black, excuse me, I just ran up the stairs, for one more year, and then we're gonna go out for RFP for three years, for 18, um, audit year 18, 19, and 20. This will be the new practice to go every. It, it's not no, a new practice. It's not a new practice. practice. We, the, the city has routinely gone out every three years. Uh, this year, we're, it's going to be four years because of the changeover in the finance staff. Um, this was a lower priority activity. So we're just asking, asking to extend one more year before we go back to our routine practice of every three I years. I understand that. I just don't recall much emphasis was going to about every three years it was in the in back in 14 it was in October that they went out for RFP with Johnson Black and I believe it was for other um, accounting firms for auditing services and I checked back and it was every three years for as far back as I can remember but Dwayne used to do it and with him leaving and then this year with Valerie mm -hmm. leaving and Nicholas starting getting into the budget year it was just an oversight so instead of putting a rush on it and trying to get things from accounting firms within a week's matter of time, we just want to extend Johnson Black one year and then go out for RFPs next year for a three-year contract. Kind of like what we did with the banking services last year. Valerie I didn't think to have a, a chance to, to do all the RFPs, so we extended Mount City Bank one year, and then this year we went out for the RFP. To, to address your question, we did do the research, um, both of us being new, being a little newer. Uh, we did the research to see what had been done in the past, and that was what we found, was that, that the city had gone out for proposals on a routine basis every three and I And I would concur with that, that Can't, we have gone I, out. I make a motion that we uh, extend uh, the contract with Johnson Black and Company for audit services for the calendar year 2017. Second. I'll second. Motion and a second. Westby? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Francis? Yes. Stackhausen? Yes. Killian? You gotta Pickles? Get closer to the yes. microphone. No? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is resolution 1722 authorizing the sale of lot 43 of the Platteville Industry Park. Hi. Hello, can you guys hear me? Gila <laughs> Cockade, the Platteville Area Industrial Development Corporation. And we are looking to bring in a business to Platteville, and they're looking to settle in the new portion of the industry park. They are a cold storage facility looking at $3.5 million of investment bringing about 10 jobs in about 20 to $30 wage range. And they're looking to um, streamline, get things started. They would like to submit plans to the state and hopefully get, even start breaking ground this year. So really excited to come to Platteville. The main reason that they wanted to come to Platteville is our quality of life, our new facilities with the hotel, you know, the hospital, the quality of life in terms of the theater. Those were the main draws. They're putting their corporate headquarters here and so that'll be 9,000 square feet of office space and 20,000 square feet of cold storage. It really complements the region very well in terms of manufacturing and cluster of food manufacturing and they're looking at having local as well as regional ties, not just in Wisconsin but also Illinois and Iowa. So overall, it's a win-win. We have to give a report to the EDA, the Economic Development Administration, who gave us the $800,000 grant for the infrastructure for the industry part edition. So now that we can illustrate that within a um, little over a year, we have already brought in a new business. It just helps Platteville maintain that edge that we are growing, thriving, worthy of receiving grant city. So any questions I can answer? Yes, I have a couple. Okay. And um, 
Kurā. Oh, I'll keep a uh, copy. And so my my question is what is a good paying job in southwestern Wisconsin for a single person? Second question is family of four. We often have heard that we need good paying jobs in Plotville. And so I'm asking the questions, what is a good paying job for a single person and a family of four? So a good paying job for a single person would be anywhere between nine to $11. And this is specifically for Grant County. If you're looking for a family of four, then that wage jumps up to $33 per hour. So it depends on the shifts you're working, degree of overtime in terms of um, if you're using childcare, that massages that number. So. Anywhere the lowest minimum wage would be about $38,000 annually for a family of four, two kids, assuming that one parent or both parents are working. So you're saying that for a single person, nine, did I hear nine to $11 an hour? Correct. That is not a, a living wage. It depends on what your needs are. So but I'm I know at people that, that work two jobs at those rates. And then if you're looking, so this is looking at if you, whether you're not looking at. Um, they're, they're the working poor. I, I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you there, Kent. And that's one of the things that we're working on addressing. However, if you're looking at what the wage is, say, for a single person, a college kid, 9 to $11. And this is what is looking at for Google wages and for Department of Workforce Development. If you're looking at a parent, if you're looking at two incomes, then that changes. Okay, I found a few things. The Labor Department says that the uh, average wage is $26.53 an hour. That was in the State Journal back in early November. That's 55000 a year, a living wage, I would assume. And then I read another article in the State Journal. The experts there said that the, the middle income Wage rate is forty-four thousand to seventy-two. Now you may disagree that seventy-two is too high. Then I found one from the Census Bureau that says the median, the middle household income, fifty-seven thousand six seventeen. Then I found an article. There was an article on Foxconn, and at the end it said, "I'm supposed to be paying at least thirty thousand per year." And an average of 53,875. So if you divide 53,875 by 2,080 hours, that's 25.90 per hour. So, and that's making. That's my question. Uh, I think what you have here, some of these are not living wages. My next point is that uh, in looking at this project, I'm not uh, criticizing the project per se, but I'm, I'm looking at the fact that at the three and a half million dollars minus the 250,000 uh, credit, uh, that in itself pays for the land. Is that correct? Say that one more time. The building is is three point five million. Three and a half million dollars. Mm-hmm. Take off 250000 and then you get a credit of uh, 4000 for every 10000 So I figured out that you're paying for, they're paying for the building. Correct. So that the wages really don't enter in. You really don't have an emphasize, emphasis on the wages. So and to me, there should be more emphasis on the wages. Balance that with the building. So we had this discussion, I believe. Um, you need to get more emphasis on wages to get the good paying jobs. So we had this discussion when we discussed about the land price formula. The reasoning behind this is if a building or if the company were to pick up shop and leave, you would still have the tax base of the building. So ultimately, the land would be paying, consistently paying. You may not have the jobs creating that multiplier effect, that ripple effect across our local economy, but at least you'd still have the tax base of the property tax generating that income for the city. So that's why we heavily predicated it on the buildings. The jobs, especially if they're higher paying jobs, like this particular business is, 20 to $30 per hour, 
are helping build up that ripple economy effect. So in this essence, we are supporting jobs as long as they're in that upper tier, and we've heavily um, accounted for that in the land price formula. But primarily, it's predicated on that land tax base, the building improvements. Count the jobs that are, that are on the low end, the last, the first two. Oh, in the formula? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, the jobs, period, don't help uh, as far as... Uh So this, uh, just to bring us back to the action, this particular building, this particular project would be very advantageous to Platteville because it complements our existing industries and helps support and build a cluster, a network supporting our current industries, especially in food manufacturing, which of course is what Southwest Wisconsin is known for. In terms of wages, um, that is a longer conversation. In fact, we just hosted a workforce summit talking about wage data, and I'm more than happy to share that information with you. As well as strategies, there is a workforce team here in Platteville, as well in Southwest Wisconsin and Pro Prosperity Southwest, more than happy to share that data with you and let you know what we're working on. I guess I would just... Collect, uh, make a survey of the wages that are paid by the businesses at... I do have that wage data, and I can go ahead and email that to you. <coughs> okay, so you do collect that. Correct. And, and I would just note that uh, PADIC is working off of a land price formula that was approved by the Common Council last year. Well, that, that's true, but uh, looking at it, maybe it should be. I make a is, motion we approve the resolution emphasis. authorizing the sale of or, uh, property in the industry at, park. Please do not butt in. I didn't, I didn't hear you, Ken, because you weren't next to your microphone. I'm sorry. So I think there needs to be a, a more critical look as far as the importance of wages. I think what... And the next question is, um, we talk about taxes. Where are the taxes going? Are these taxes going to TIF, or are they going to go to the general fund? They'll go to the TID district. So the taxes really aren't going to the people for how many years, 15, 20 years before they um, I'm not sure the date of the closure on TID 6, but I would note that we are right now advancing money from the general fund to pay debt associated with TID 6, and this will reduce then the amount of money that the general fund has to advance to that TID district. But the taxes are not going directly to the general. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I Those make- Those are my points, and thinking about this, I think greater balance on wages versus the building. Again, Ken, that would be a decision of the council. So if that's a discussion that we have at some point, it is a decision well, of the council. It, the the it land price formula. It comes formula. from PADIC. PADIC. It does. PADIC, PADIC is, makes is, recommendation. Yes. And then it comes to the council. Right. All right. Ready for a motion. I make a motion. We approve the resolution authorizing the sale of this property in the industry park, uh, lot 43. I, yes. All right. We have a motion and a second. And that also includes the option on the adjoining piece of property. Right. And I, uh, last thing I'd like to point out, that this was a very joint effort with Howard, with Joe, with Brian, and Dan Dressens and Jim Schneller. All of us came together, spoke with the client very much on behalf <laughs> of the city to make sure that this was all in the city's best interest. Thank you. All right. We'll vote, Jan. Westby? Yes. Doss? Yes. Francis? Yes. Backhausen? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Nall? Yes. Motion carries. All right, that concludes the action items. We'll go on to information and discussion. The first is an ordinance renaming Chapter 36 and amending Chapter uh, Section, excuse me, 3606, license fees. Jan? At the license committee, we um, discussed uh, implementing a, a late fee for um, annual liquor license renewals um, currently we don't have that so this would just give a an avenue to to get people to get them in on time get them published on time and approved on time 
Um, in addition, the ordinance would change the, um, the chapter name from intoxicating liquor, fermented malt beverages, and other beverages just to alcohol beverages. <coughs> so, would look, any questions on that? Looking for that for the next meeting. Questions, anyone? All right, next item for discussion is Cedar Hills Condominium PUD Amendment. Joel? Okay, that project was approved a few years ago. Um, in, to include, it was part of a larger development, it included a, a family apartment building, some single family lots, and 16 single family attached condominium units. Um, they were to be constructed along Waite Lane. They've constructed four of those at this point. Um, they're having some difficulties selling or getting interest in uh, construction of the additional uh, condominiums. So they're looking to get some additional flexibility in how they build those to uh, basically to lower the price point, the cost of construction on those units that will hopefully drive some additional sales. So what they would like to do is take some of the detached single family condominiums and instead put up some duplex condominium with the idea that there'd be some cost savings in the construction that would uh, be reflected in the sale price of those units. So uh, the end result would be instead of having a total of 16 of the condominium units, they'd have 17. Uh, there would be changes to the development as proposed. Um, the plan commission did recommend this uh, uh, approval of this uh, amendment. Um, staff is recommending approval. And uh, we, we would have one minor condition. It's not really part of, it's not directly related to this amendment, but it goes back to the original approval. Um, original approval had a proposal to have a sidewalk connecting through this development from Main Street to Perry Drive. Um, that sidewalk has been partially constructed. Um, the sidewalk committee had a discussion as to when that sidewalk extension would be completed part of the original approval as far as a, a timeline that was defined. So this would be an opportunity to address that timeline. So uh, we're just suggesting that when the, uh, the lots are completed, the construction is completed on the lots shown on four and five, when they're completed, that would be the opportune time to sidewalk then construction destroying the sidewalk. So if we had that as a condition, then it's clear for the developer Questions. Uh, question. So, looking at this, the single family condos were single buildings. Correct. Now they're putting together two of them, like duplexes. Correct. Except for, okay. for, for one of them Except is going from one. a single to a double, so there'd be one additional unit. But uh, otherwise, they're basically just taking two and uh, as far as uh, putting them together, has there been any discussion yet, uh, evidence as far as the soundproofing between units? I used to live in a duplex. And I could hear the lady next door screaming at her child as far as eating his peas and so forth. And so uh, what's going to happen here to soundproof the, the buildings? Because that's... If you don't have good soundproofing, that decreases the value of the building. I, would I wouldn't say, want to live in a place like that if, if I hear what the neighbor is talking about. I'd say that would be a great question for the developer who will be here at this meeting. Okay. You can pre-warn them. Well, I think it's a great idea. We have condominiums. Uh, I can see this as a family, small family. I can see this for people my age that don't want large lawns, want a neighbor. It has a garage, has potential to have a nice basement. There is some real potential with these that will increase our, our needs in this community. Other comments or questions? Joe, can I uh, ask, are all of the remaining lots to be made into duplex lots no there would still be some additional uh single family i'm looking at this map and there's pictures on top of stuff so i can't really tell on the map that's been provided and is there one lot most of the time you've said this lot and this lot makes a duplex correct but is there one lot 
that's just a single lot that's going to have a duplex? Correct. Uh, what was originally lot four, so it would be just off of that first little cul-de-sac. That was a single family that they're duplex, but it would be essentially the same footprint as what they had outlined in the original. It's, it's basically two small units that are combined. So that's where the they're picking up the one additional unit. Other questions? You have a map that doesn't have all of these other pictures on it. <laughs> I'll go back and look at my other maps. I probably can find one looking in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do a few. All right. Is that the developers coming next week? Yes. Well, the next meeting. Next right. meeting on next the meeting. 28th. 28th. Thank you. All right. So the next item for discussion is contract 1917 snow and ice removal. Howard. Yes. Uh, here's hoping that we don't need that for a while yet. But uh, uh, this is our annual contract for removal of snow and ice on sidewalks where the property owner fails to uh, take care of it. Um, uh, we put a $20 administrative fee uh, on top of the actual charge to shovel uh, that is billed to the owner. We provided uh, bid packages to five local firms. We received one bid from Four Seasons Landscaping. Um, and uh, the prices are similar to last year. The only difference is that uh, their minimum um, for hard pack snow and ice went down from $55 to $50 minimum uh, from last year to this. Um, per our discussion with the council last year, uh, we removed the, um, the restriction of uh, shoveling on weekends uh, so so there's no no restriction in our uh, contract for them doing shoveling on any day of the week um, so uh, we'll recommend that uh, next time we uh, award to four seasons landscaping questions anyone all right, seeing none, we'll go on to the last uh, information discussion item, development amendment, agreement amendment, former Pioneer Ford property redevelopment. Okay, when we uh, agreed to sell that uh, property to General Capital and approve the uh, uh, development for that project, we included a development agreement that kind of outlined all the, the terms uh, for that sale and development. And uh, included in that agreement was a basically a tentative timeline on when things were going to happen related to that development um, and we're at the point now due to several delays in uh, uh, that project on for various issues we're at the point where we're running into a problem uh, achieving the timeline um, primarily the uh, uh, agreement says that the city would have all of the uh, building demolition and site clearance and environmental work uh, completed prior to selling that property to general capital uh, the agreement also says that the sale would take place prior to the end of this year um, which is quickly approaching so we're at the realistically not going to be able to get um, everything completed completed by that deadline so what we're proposing is to extend the uh, closing date um, to march instead of prior to december 31st um, I had put in there March 15th, but I think it's probably going to be March 31st. Um, but regardless, the, the whole intent is to extend um, that date um, take place. Questions? Just further explanation. Why did you go to March 31st? Is there a reason you couldn't do it February 3rd, 4th? Well, we we're kind of doing the, the math with, uh, uh, with General Capital. Um, with their prime financing, they, they need to have uh, basically everything lined up from, they say, at least 60 days prior to the closing. 
they can get all their paperwork due diligence work completed with their financing companies. Um, so when you start, you know, adding 60 days on to everything, and in addition to what we need to do, it, it quickly, we quickly realize that we're already into March um, before. Uh, the alternative is, you know, we got to move like right now on demolition of the additional building, the Gates Hotel building and the additional environmental work. And um, that becomes very difficult when you've got another bid to award and other contractors involved. Uh, so it, it would become very difficult to do that. Okay, just wanted to further ask. Okay. Um, I have a question for the city attorney. Uh, where in this document is the discussion of a performance bond? Let's say, for example, that the developer gets halfway through the project three quarters and says the cost of material has gone up. I don't know if I can finish this project. So where does it say in this document that, that the city has the power to complete the project with the use of a performance bond? Do, do you know that? It or can doesn't. you answer that question next time? It doesn't. It doesn't? No, we don't. It's never been included. This is not public construction. Are we are you sitting in exactly the same position that we've been in every project like this for the last 30 years? A lot of public money involved here. It's not public construction. It's a TIF district. It's a TIF. It's a pro. It's a. It is a project that is going to generate increment, and that's how the city is going to fund it or part portion of it. We have no recourse if the developer drops out. Well, the developer is going to make, as Joe has explained due diligence with the financing people and, they're, and the project's going to go forward. And if it goes under, it will be because people made a lot of mistakes. But this has not been a concern with other projects in the TIF district. Well, it just seems like uh, there's for, a... For, for a private uh, project. A, a sh seems to be a shortage of money. Now, Joe or somebody has put in the paper about um, public hearing for CB money. Is that the two hundred fifty thousand, Joe? That you... uh, the CDBG grant was for up to five hundred thousand. Which is what? CDBG grant was for up to five hundred thousand, and that is for the cost of acquiring the property. We passed it for two fifty. Uh, the, the grant was for up to 500000 Oh, it was up to 500000 Do you have a copy of the grant now? Yes, I do. That's not okay. the grant you're referring to, though. Pardon? <laughs> Are you talking about the CDBG grant or the Community Development Investment Grant that General well, Capital just wanted? This was the one that it came to the council. We had nothing before us except a resolution asked you for a copy of the write-up and you I, I saw you three times you didn't have it correct i still do, do not you have, have that, that one now i do not do not oh it has not been submitted yet okay anybody else have any questions well I'm, i have one more question one okay. more comment well it's a question uh underneath the uh, Section 6.2, Article 6, it says um, that in addition and without limitation, any of the parties shall have the following specific rights and remedies following such notice and failure to cure. Side point, what does cure mean? And Well, 
the, the notion is in Article 6 that if, for instance, the city would in some way breach the agreement, that the part that the non defaulting party would have the right to seek certain specific relief, including the right to get a court order to direct the defaulting party to perform, to uh, stop whatever it is that they're doing that is wrong, or, or to sue for money damages for okay. a breach. But then uh, the, next, the, the next paragraph, it says, notwithstanding the foregoing, comma, in no event may city exercise or seek any rights of injunction or specific performance for developers' failure to acquire the properties. In other words, get down to March or whatever, and the developer decides he's not going to do the project, we don't have any recourse. We can't. According to this statement, that's why I we, interpret it. Yeah, according to this, we can't make them buy the property. We can't make them buy it. So we're... That true? That, that's, that seems to be what it's saying. Um, if they're not going to build the project, it would be a shame to sell it to them. We do have uh, one person who's asked to speak, Gary Prohaska. Gary Prohaska. I live at 280 Division Street here in Platteville, Wisconsin. I'm on the Preservation Commission, and I've been in the dealings with the Gates Hotel. Uh, this is just information, and it's to the public and also to the City Council. Uh, I've been on, in contact with the developer Tobin Murdoch and Adam Johnson the past week, and I've been dealing with trying to get something for this RFP. And we've discussed the Gates Hotel at length and possible options. I feel that issues should be brought to your attention concerning both the developer as well as HPC. Haven't been concerned. What we've been concerned with, developers, truly was truly interested in restoring the Gates Hotel. And this is what they do: they preserve and restore historic buildings. The requirement to move the building made it much more difficult. This move added 180,000 plus a new foundation to the cost, as well as possible costs for the city lots, which were not mentioned as poss possibly given. They looked at investing an estimated $500,000 into the building, and then, of course, the additional cost for relocation added to a difficult situation. To add to this is the short time uh, to apply for historic tax credits. And these are due to expire or be distra distract, drastically cut, both at the state as well as the federal level, and anybody that's been following that is aware of this, that the tax credits uh, were line-itemed, uh, at the state, and so that's pretty well taken a lot of that out. And also, uh, they're looking at the budget right now in the federal level, and so far I think the, the uh, uh, Senate has looked at shrinking it from 20 to 10. These, these are things that possibly could happen, and if you get your paperwork in in time, you can still get the tax credits, but Add the uncertainty of insistence in overcoming the cost of relocation, which will take time, time which is needed for the historic tax credit application process, and there's too much uncertainty to overcome. So in other words, trying to get these grants, the Fillmore grant, which the state has, there's a number of other grants, but to apply for these and when these grants come out, it's all hinged on can you get the grants and assistance to move the building is probably the biggest issue. As a result, they've chosen another historic building to renovate. That building has the support of the local government there. Talking to the state officials at the preservation office in Madison in a discussion with developers, it was decided to notify the parties involved today so as not to unnecessarily lengthen the time of uncertainty so you can make your decisions and stuff like that. Um, it, it was only right because there's there's just no way to move forward on this. There is no reason to extend the developer agreement time frame with general, general capital due to any uncertainty over the Gates Hotel. Thank you, and I want to thank all the public citizens and stuff like that, people that have really been involved and really wanted to see this Gates Hotel survived. It's definitely a large piece of history for Platteville, and in talking with the state, 
Uh, they said that this is happening completely across the entire state. They lost six major projects just this week that were over a million dollars. So in other words, this is a smaller one. It's only 500,000. But it's rippling across the entire United States. And Wisconsin was hit especially hard, being as they were cut at both levels. And I just wanted to say thank you to all the citizens that tried to save the Gates Hotel. Right. That ends our information and discussion actions, and we will be going off camera and have a work session. The work sessions will include downtown parking recommendations, permit parking, Pioneer Road, and the downtown sidewalk snow removal. After that, we'll be going into closed session. So. Thank you.